So let's take a look at it because I think a lot of students are having trouble with this. If I took out the square root of 36. Now, um, Rihanna, Rihanna, we know that the square root of 36, what two numbers multiply to give me 36? She could say that answer is 6, because I even have the answer right here. But let's use our rules. If I was going to show you guys what to do um, with this, I could rewrite the square root of 36 as the square root of 9 times 4. Correct? Correct? Sure. Now what I want you guys to understand is here's the little rule, and I'm going to prove to you why the rule works. All right, the square root of 9 times 4, that is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 4. They're equal to each other. All right? Now, let's check out see if it works. What's the square root of 9? Three. We already know this answer is 6, right? So you know the answer is 6. Um, so you have 3 times 2, which equals 6. So why is this so important? Why is it so important to understand you can separate them when you multiply? Well, let's take a look at it. What if I gave you the square root of 20? Is the square root of 20 one of the root numbers that you know? No. So the next thing you do is you say, all right, what is the largest square number that I can divide into that? Can you look? Well, I'm sorry. Remember, here's your square numbers. So with largest squares is going to be 4. So I can rewrite 20 as a square root times 5. And the reason why I got that out of there is I just rewrote this like I did here. I just rewrite it now as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Now, do I know what the square root of 4 is? 2. Do I know what the square root of 5 is? There's your answer. Okay? Right, Nate? 